Hi, Carol Stutz. Hi, Scotty. Hi, Jim. What fabulous lifelong friends you are. Thank you, Carol, for coming to see me twice, maybe three times, maybe four times by now. Thank you for being there for me. You're like a sister. I love you so much. Thank you, Sue and John, for continually being friends since we're 18. Thank you for all your hospitality, for all of my wonderful visits to you. Thank you, John Griffith and Jarlene, for being my best friend, John, since I'm 15. Thank you, Barry, my fellow artist friend, since we're 18. We're like soul friends. I love your work. I'll greatly miss you. Thank you so much, George and Jeanette. You're amazing. I love you. Thank you for your encouragement, your kindness, your love. Thank you, Chris and Debbie Blaze. Thank you, Lynn and Jim. Thank you for our hours and hours of fun. Thank you, all of Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Harvey. I love you. You're so much fun. What a comfort. Thanks for visiting me in the hospital. Thank you for all my beloved brothers and sisters in the congregation. If I have done anything to hurt or offend anyone, I'm sorry. I love you. You're amazing. Keep your faith in the Messiah. I love you all. I'll see you there. God bless you. This segment is for people, women everywhere, with ovarian cancer and women that will get ovarian cancer. My hope and prayer is that my work will raise money for research to help others that are suffering with this disease. Not much progress has been made in the cure of this illness. I am hoping the proceeds of this book will go towards immunity research and all the women in the future that will suffer from this life-shortening, incredibly intense illness the work behind me, I want to explain. The, this work is the painting that I've created and recreated 15 times. Before my diagnosis, I painted a very calm sea. And as time went on, I would have this intuition, this urge to just passionately go and change it. And it began becoming gray. And soon there was a storm. And soon there was a hurricane. And then one night, there was an arch. And there are angels in the arch. And there's a beam of light at the other end. And there's an angel standing over the wave. And the angel is saying, peace be still. And it was the Lord talking to me, telling me, he's with me in this trial. And he'll make a way through this trial for me. And I want women everywhere to survive, to go through this trial. Please, family, never forget about cancer and cancer survivors. And I also want to talk about these pieces. When I was in remission, I created worship angels inspired by my trip to Israel. And they are joyful. This woman is holding the book of Psalms. And this is an expression of freedom and joy. Despite any circumstances in your life, you can still have hope. You can still have joy. I want to talk about this piece. This is a very pivotal piece. It's very chaotic. But I painted this piece the week before my diagnosis, I knew that something was wrong and it was an intense feeling, but I didn't know what it was. And you see the pregnant women, you see the red ovary in the top upper left hand corner, you see lots of blood, you see the color red, you see this intensity of all of this and the chaoticness the image of the of females 
And that is what I painted when I first had my diagnosis. The, if I can move, the first painting I painted after my recovery in my remission is the Tree of Life. It's so beautiful. Psalm 1, we're planted by streams of water. And it's absolutely beautiful to me. And it's, it's so calming. And then I will move. I have to, I'll move on to this piece. Okay. And I'll bring two more pieces out that I want to talk about. This piece is an actual beautiful, incredible, romantic piece, ballroom dancing with the invisible band. I just love it. It's so textured. It's textured with rock that I smashed from an archaeological dig in Israel. It's full of everything. And I had painted this before my diagnosis. I painted this about, I probably had ovarian cancer when I painted this. But I had a feeling there was a dark ball in the center of my gut. And I created this painting. It's a self-portrait. And it started out all green and blue. And I had an intense feeling that I needed to change it. And I painted in the tumors. Cancer looks like bloody, bloody red rocks. And you see the veil of this woman. What is the veil of our beauty as women? I, I think it's the way that we bear children, our femininity, our hair, our breast, you know, our uterus. And this is sort of, you can live without your hair, your breast, your uterus, and your ovaries, but it's what makes you feminine. It's your glory. And my glory had been breached. And this is the cancer all over the peritoneal. And I, I showed my oncologist, and he was actually blown away by that. And he knew exactly what I was talking about. And this is all before I knew that I had cancer. The second self-portrait that I did is this self-portrait. It's a self-portrait of shock and vulnerability. This woman is falling apart. Um, you can see that she's intact, but she is very, she's falling apart. Getting cancer is a shock. And somehow the Lord was communicating to me what I'd have to walk through before it even happened. And lastly, warrior woman. This is one of my most popular paintings. This woman is me. And this was, again, painted before my diagnosis. But she's on total lockdown. She retains her beauty and femininity, but there's armor everywhere. There's not a break. And that is the shield of faith that God gives us. He gives you strength when you have none in yourself. He will envelope you in a shield and give you his power. This is another self-portrait. This was done in April. My diagnosis was in August. Here is a woman who is going through, a, it's a self-portrait, but you can see her right to the bone as though she's being scanned and as though she's drinking contrast fluid. You can really see it. Most people are not attracted to this. But this is a foretelling of myself going through chemotherapy. This is a, another painting that I did before my cancer diagnosis. It's very interesting. It's probably a little disturbing, but there's a black angel. This is actually my father and his face in a woman's body. And the cloak, the way we pass on genes, we pass on genes, good genes, bad genes. We pass on cancer. We pass on diseases. We pass on addictions. 
And this, this generation is the people at the bottom are Zach, my mother, who is also passing on her genes, and Jacob. But the point of this painting is that we can't control our biology, our DNA, and what we pass on. And so what we can control is choosing life. And Jesus came that we may have life abundantly despite our diseases, our circumstances, we have abundant life. Please keep that in mind. This is a painting of my menorah series. I love this painting. It's multi-layered. There is a rock. There is some ground up stone from Israel. There's lots of texture in this. And I began to do a series of menorahs. After my cancer came back at the end of June, I began to do this piece. And I have done some other menorahs since then. And I've become really interested in expressing Jewish art. And I hope that in my death, money will be raised and awareness for ovarian cancer. I love you women. I know what you're going through. And I want to ask, I want to pray with you right now. God, have mercy on all women who get ovarian cancer. I ask you, Lord God, to bring answers for women so they can recover from this illness and have life and have it abundantly. I pray for strength and courage for these women. And lastly, I want you to know that you're not alone, that I have had this disease for 13 months and I've had joy almost every day and including all of the time that I've lived, I've probably had about 10 horrible days. And that's not many compared to 13 months. And so I want to encourage you to live life because life after your diagnosis can be the best life you've ever had. You get the gift of clarity. You get the gift of knowing exactly what you, what you care about and what's on your bucket list. I love you. God bless you.